Okay, so now it's time for our last uh, slideshow on the basics of research, and this is finding ideas for your research projects. So let's go over the basics of finding ideas for your research projects. The basics are looking for replications and extensions. Replications and extensions. Replications and extensions. I can't underemphasize that. Yes, I cannot underemphasize that. Replication and extension. That is how you should find ideas for your own research project. If you're doing a research poster, if you're in research methods and doing a research proposal, either way, you probably need to focus on replication and extension. The best research ideas are generated by way of replicating a study and adding an extension. That's how everyone does it. That's how other researchers do it, and including me, including all the professors you know here. The researchers I know who are the most prolific, who are the most famous, who have published the most, do this by programmatic research that is replicating and extending their previous research. What about your own research ideas? Well, uh, in uh, Zuckman's Writing uh, for Psychology, which we use in research methods, on page 33, she sums up everything perfectly. Let me just read this to you. Hypotheses need rationales. They are not supposed to be based on intuition or hunches. It is possible that early on in the research process, an experimenter did have a hunch. That hunch may even have led to the researcher to begin the project, perhaps by beginning a literature search to support that hunch. By the time the literature has been reviewed, the author is supposed to be able to support the hypothesis with something more convincing than his or her original hunch. Researchers normally use previous research or theories to predict how they expect an experiment to come out. And so that's what uh, Zuckman has to say. I couldn't say it better myself. And I think I'll put off the example till a little, couple slides later on. Where do we find these research ideas? Uh, in discussion sections of research studies and in literature reviews. And notice it's capital L, capital R, uh, capitalized literature reviews. I've been using the term uh, literature review. Uh, sometimes to talk about what goes on in your introduction section of a paper. Uh, a pr uh, you know, author of a paper will, during the introduction, present a literature review, which is they review the literature, the past literature. A capitalized literature review is a special type of article, and I'll describe that in a little bit. First, off to discussion sections. Uh, in every discussion section, authors should discuss the limitations of their studies. This is a very valuable source to find ideas for extensions. Let's go to an example. Uh, infant exposure to domestic violence predicts heightened sensitivity to adult verbal conflict. So let's go through and look at the PDF file. This study has several limitations. This is in the discussion section. Here we see the, per, the authors doing what they should do, which is discussing the limitations. Uh, and take a second to read that. Stop the uh, slideshow. And here's the rest of that section. So take a, uh, take a second, stop the slideshow to read uh, through uh, the first uh, paragraph here. So here are the possible extensions that the authors suggest. Increase the sample size. Now that's a very, very uh, no-brainer uh, extension. And in terms of grading that, I wouldn't really give that a high grade because it's a very, very easy thing to do. It involves no knowledge of the uh, research, no knowledge of the theories involved. And that would be a good uh, idea, but not a A-plus idea. They suggest steps to increase the variability in temperament of the subjects. And that's a good idea also. They talked about replacing the angry phone call with expressions of fear. Another good A plus extension. Other extensions, of course. A professor of mine in graduate school said that you should be able to find five or six different 
problems with any study. The studies that are published in journals that you see, even the best journals, have methodological problems in them. And you could identify those problems. If you identify those problems and identify fixes, that's a possible extension. And here's our second example, Janet Swim, Mood as Information and Making Attributions to Discrimination. And again, this is one of these lying EBSCO situations where there's nothing here that says the article is online, but if we click Find It, you will find the PDF file. So again, take a minute or so to read this slide, stop the slideshow, and take a minute or so to read this slide, stop the slideshow. And so uh, SWIM uh, suggests several extensions. One is uh, issues related to the time of day and mood. And this is a research article, so she's not going to go into length about her reasoning. She's going to refer you to these two other studies she uh, published in 2001. Uh, and it's your job to read those studies and try to make sense of what she's saying in relation to those two studies and this study. She talks about this mood cycle, and she refers you to another author. So again, to understand what this extension could be, you would have to read that other article and possibly more articles, and then try to relate it to her study. And then she talks about context, and she does, again, give you other authors' studies to read. You should read those and then try to tie them back to her study. So these are all uh, you know, possible extensions to SWIM study. And now I think I'd like to talk about that example. In a research methods class recently, I had a student who uh, her original idea for her paper was uh, on the topic of what do online male gamers think about female gamers. And she was, of course, uh, a female gamer. gamer and uh, she you know, was remarking to me about how odd it was when you know, she would chat either uh, with voice chat or text chat uh, some of the people that she was playing with online. And when they'd find out that she was a female, they'd say something like, well, are you fat or are you ugly? <laughs> and, uh, you know, she'd say, no, I'm not. And so this was her hunch that uh, there are stereotypes that male gamers have about uh, the physical characteristics of female gamers. So I start her out by uh, sending her to look at the literature on stereotypes. And I suggested some studies to her which looked at this situation or this phenomena in different situations. And it was a, a long process because I was trying, you know, she came to me first with a hunch, which was great. And what I had to do during the course of the semester is direct her to those articles, which would allow her to find the research to support her hunch, to be able to support her hunch with operational definitions, to be able to support her hunch with research results. And it was a long process, but she ended up with one of the highest uh, grades in the class. In fact, the highest grade in the class, over 100%. So this is an example of how you take a hunch and you turn it into a research uh, hypothesis. You have to go into the research literature and find things that are analogous or analogs to what you're talking about. And in fact, that's what she did. She found research on perceptions of uh, you know, women and how to measure perceptions of physical, of physical attractiveness and related that to her hunch. And it turned out to be a very, very good paper. Now we move on to the literature review articles. Literature review articles are non-empirical in that the researcher, uh, the uh, author writing the article is not conducting research. They're not collecting data. They're just reading other research articles and writing about them. Since they're reading other people's research articles, this is non-primary. And finally, uh, it is or should be uh, peer-reviewed. That is, uh, you just need to check PsycInfo to see whether or not uh, the uh, 
uh, abstract page mentions that this is a peer-reviewed journal. And in fact, you should find peer-reviewed literature reviews and use them. Literature reviews are articles which just basically review other articles. They don't just do that. What they do is they summarize other articles. That is, they'll put the articles together uh, in terms of different categories which make sense to researchers. Let's take a look at an example. So to find an example, we need to go to an advanced search. So when you go to PsycInfo, click the link for advanced search right underneath the search box, and you'll get this page. So let's type in, type in sexual assault and put that in quotation marks so we find that. Then let's scroll down to the bottom of this page. Now let's scroll down to the bottom of the page. Notice that we have all these options. The option we're interested in is methodology, and if you go look at the methodology box, I selected literature review. Now we're only going to return literature reviews. Notice you can do all sorts of interesting things here. Uh, you could limit it to English. You could uh, limit the year uh, of publication. You could limit the journal. Uh, you could do all sorts of things. Uh, once you understand PsycInfo and the search engine, you can start playing around with it. Notice also I click the box to exclude uh, dissertations. That's because dissertations are not peer-reviewed, so we and it costs 30 bucks to get one, so we really don't want to see them messing up our search. And here's our search results for our search for uh, literature reviews. And let's look at the first one, Gender Differences in Perceptions of Sexual Intent, a Qualitative Review and Integration. This is another lying EBSCO situation in that it doesn't say we have this online, but if we click Find Other Op, we will find the PDF file. And let me just show you an example of what I'm talking about. I said that literature reviews organize the articles in terms of important categories for the researchers. And here's an important one, sexual intent methods. That is, how do you measure sexual intent? And we're talking about construct uh, you know, validity here and operational definitions. And so what we see here is uh, different studies organized in terms of the different uh, constructs they used and the different operational definitions that they used. And then not only does the author describe these articles and categorize them which is which, notice right at the bottom, and let's go on to the next page, limitations and future directions. Those are the terms that you've seen in the discussion section saying, oh, here are some ideas. And indeed, if we read through here, we'll find some research ideas, because one of the things that an author of a literature review should do is uh, analyze the studies and find weaknesses and suggest future definitions, uh, future directions, excuse me, just as any author would do in their own discussion section. And that's to wrap it up. Minalushi told me that I was putting too many dog pictures in these uh, slideshow presentations. So here's a uh, picture of Minalushi I took and edited to make it kind of Andy Warhol-esque. So Minalushi and I wish you good luck and good researching.